Hi and welcome back to Bestas Farm Life. Today I'm going to make a really delicious barbecue sauce and as you can see I also made yellow salsa and some enchilada sauce this day. But first off I'm going to make the barbecue sauce and I took out some of my red tomatoes because I really want a dark red color. I have so many different kinds of tomatoes so I had to pick some of them out. And uh, first off, I'm, I just cleaned them and now I'm cutting them open and if there's any bad spots, I will remove that. And then I will put them out into my smoker and smoke them for about four hours or so. This will give them a really nice smoky flavor. And in the hot smoker, they will also lose a lot of the moisture. So that makes the sauce even thicker uh, and I don't have to boil it for so long. I'm also cutting up a few big onions and some garlic and I will smoke those too. So I'm starting out with these four um, tins that I will put in my smoker. So three of them are with the red tomatoes and then the last one I have the onions and garlics and little tomatoes and an apple. And this is my smoker. So it's an electric one and it's really easy to smoke anything in there. And um, I will give them four to six hours. And these are some tomatoes that I took out of my freezer. This is the day before, so I will let them thaw and in this way they will also lose a lot of the moisture so that I can get the sauce really nice and thick without using any tomato paste. And now I'm just outside by the smoker and having a look on how, it, how it's smoking and you can see there's a lot of smoke coming up there, so that will be really good. They are not quite finished yet, but they are close. You can see on the onions that they are getting some color and the tomatoes are shrinking. So now they are finished and you can also see the garlic. I just cut off the tops so that the uh, smoky flavor could, could get down to the garlic. So now I'm removing all of the tomatoes and I'm um, also the onions and then the garlics I will uh, take out of the shell. And it's a lot easier this way because they are soft now and I can just push them out or I can remove the skins really easy because they also shrunk down a little in the heat. And this is what you pay a lot for if you want to buy a barbecue sauce with roasted garlic, but it's so easy just to make it yourself and the taste is so much better. So in this big pot I am putting all of the things in and I also had that smoked apple and I will put in some more fresh apples and some plums. So now I'm just out in the garden and picking some of the plums and of course Holly is helping me or at least she's eating a lot of the plums. So you can see just how many we have on this tree and they are really sweet and delicious. So I'll put some of those in about a kilo or so and uh, I will make a really big batch of barbecue sauce. So it's not that they will give a lot of carbs to the end product, but they still give some sweetness and some other flavor than if I was only using tomatoes. And I really like that. And uh, now that I have the plums, I can use them for this instead of making jams or something like that. In this way I can use them in a savory way. And because I'm eating keto the most of the time, I will always try to make some of these things without any added sugars. So I'm also not adding too many plums or apples to keep the carbs down. But it's still way better if you uh, just did a store-bought one that's maybe 50% sugar or so. And uh, I also have a few apples left on this tree, so I will just pick some of them and use in the barbecue sauce as well. I'm also using some of the plums in the salsa that I will make in another video. It's a, a peach salsa with yellow tomatoes and the plums and a little apples and so. Now you can see all of the tomatoes are done smoking and they have 
gotten a little darker color and you can really see the smoke on them and a lot of the moisture is gone now. So as I mentioned before, that means I don't have to boil this all day long to make it thick and I don't have to use any tomato paste. I'm also always using all of the skins and the seeds because I will put it in the Vitamix when I'm almost finished with the product. So it will make it so nice and smooth. These are the plums and the apples that I picked and I'm just washing them now so I can use them in this sauce. And the cores from the apples I will also use. This time I'm going to use them for uh, apple vinegar, but uh, you can also use them if you're making apple jelly. There's a lot of pectin inside of those, so never let them go to waste. And if you have chickens and you don't want to use them for anything else, you can always put them out in the chicken coop and they will eat them as well. So now I'm just putting all of the apples down here and as I mentioned, I will blend it up so it doesn't matter if they are in bigger pieces. And now onto the plums. They are really easy to remo remove the stones from, so it won't take a lot of time. And everything will just go down into that really big stock pot that I have. It's an 18 liter or it's about the same thing as 18 quarts. So it's a really big one. And uh, now I'll put down all of the smoked tomatoes. And I will also get some of those from the freezer that have thawed. And I also have a few chilies in the, from the freezer as well. And you can see I have drained those tomatoes. So now they don't take up a lot of space. You can see just how soft it is. And if you really wanted to remove all of the skins, this is the time to do it. And this is from one of the tomato bags from the freezer. So you can see just how much water that was in that. And you can keep it to put in later on if you think it's getting too thick. Now I'm just putting in some cloves and uh, they will give it a really nice and spicy taste and uh, they, those will also just get blended up when I'm blending all of it. So it doesn't matter that they are whole, they will also soften up a lot, a lot when uh, they are boiling. Now I have all of my chilies. These are actually for the enchilada sauce, but I also use some of them in my barbecue sauce, both to give it some nice taste, but also because of the dark color. I really like when a barbecue sauce is nice and dark, so that's why I use some of these. And I have four different kinds. This is a puya or whatever it's called. And um, I will take some of them out into this bowl and put on some water and let them soak for a few hours just to soften them up. And if there's any bitterness on them, it will remove that. And uh, then I can also take off the stems and the seeds. And this is a pasilla, I think it's called. So I have these two smaller bags and then I have those two really big bags. So I have four. I have chilies for a long time but they're also quite expensive so it's nice that I have a lot of them so I already used them a lot this year. This is guajillo I think and um, so I mentioned that I'm using them now and I'm using them in the enchilada sauce and I can remember if I also used it in my sloppy joes and this is just the ancho or poblano chilies so they are not spicy at all and I'm all Always using some chilies that are not too spicy because I really like the flavor but I don't like them to be so spicy that I can taste the flavor and especially right now when I'm putting it into a barbecue sauce it also doesn't have to be that spicy. 
So these will just sit here for a few hours. And the reason why I'm not blending all of this before I cook it is because it's it will get really thick. So if I blended it before, it would have a hard time to heat through without splashing everywhere. And then I just cut up some more onions that I will fry in some olive oil. And then I will put some spices and the chilies on here. These are just some mustard seeds that I will put in. Usually you could just use mustard powder or uh, ready-made mustard. But uh, I have these two kinds of mustard seeds and and because I'm blending the whole thing afterwards, I will just put in the whole seeds. This is some paprika and it's always a good thing to roast all of your spices because it will bring out the flavor in them. This is my homemade chipotle powder from last year. I'm also going to make some more this year because as you can see, I've already used a lot of it and it's just so tasty. I like the smoky flavor of the chilies. These are some black pepper flakes or yeah, just some black pepper. <laughs> um, and then I'm just toasting everything and making the onion soft. And you can use whatever vinegar you like, but I really like the balsamic one because it's a little sweeter and has a lot more taste than just, than just a normal one. Uh, but be aware, there's a lot of carbs in this one compared to a normal vinegar. But I'm using so little that it doesn't really matter. And I just like to uh, fry that as well and make it like a little syrupy. And if you were using sugar, you would also put it on now, but I'm using erythritol. So now I'm going in with the chilies and I remove most of the seeds and the stems. So they will just toast for a little while before going into the big pot. And you can just see how delicious all of this looks. You can almost smell all of the nice flavors through the camera. I'm also putting in some of this Worcestershire sauce and uh, it will also enhance all of the flavors of the other things. And I just have a little leftover of this mango vinegar that I'm using. So I just use up what I have. This is just some regular vinegar. And um, this is the erythritol. So as I mentioned, if you're putting in sugar, this is also now that you would do it. But I'm just using the erythritol. And this one is a 500 grams uh, bag. I will maybe put in some more later on when I taste it. So I'll just make this um, melt down into the other things before putting it into the bigger pot. And I'm also putting in some of this other kind of balsamic vinegar. And now everything in the big pot is boiling away. So I'm just stirring it and then I will put in all of my chilies and the other things from the smaller pan. So they will incorporate well before I will blend it all up.
and I'm using my Vitamix to blend it up. I will not use a stick blender or motion blender for this because it won't make it fine enough. And because I have all of the skins and all of the whole fruits and so in it, I will really make sure to blend it up well and the Vitamix will do that for me. Now I'm also putting in some Thantan gum because it will help it thicken even more. So if I didn't do it, it will still be really thick, but uh, it could be just a little watery, uh, like a, a normal tomato sauce. Uh, but when I'm putting in the Thantan gum, it will really thicken up like a, a store-bought barbecue sauce. It will ha have a whole other consistency that you won't see anywhere else. So um, I'm just putting about, um, or filling half of my Vitamix and blending it. And then you can just see how jiggly it is now. And then I'm just pouring it into another pot and continue with the whole big pot. And then I will uh, combine everything at the end and uh, just taste it and see if it needs anything else of spices or so. And you can really see just how thick and nice it is and it really looks like a normal barbecue sauce this way. But you could also see that if I wanted to boil it as it is here, it will, would just splatter everywhere. And that is why I boil all of the veggies, and the tomatoes and so on beforehand and then blend it up at the end. And uh, now I'm just pouring everything back into the, my big pot because the smaller one is already filled up now. And I didn't put any salt in beforehand, so that is what I'm going to do now. And that's because I don't know exactly how much will evaporate while I'm boiling it. So just to make sure it won't get too salty, I will put the salt in at the end. And it already looks so yummy. You should really smell this. It's just so good. I feel it could uh, taste a little sweeter, so I'm putting in some more Wilfretol. And uh, I'm also putting in a little more of the balsamic vinegar. And I will put in a little Thantan gum into this, just to make sure that it won't get uh, any runnier now that I'm putting in some more of uh, the vinegar. So I'm just blending the Thantan gum into the vinegar to make sure that it will dissolve into the rest of uh, the mixture. If I would just put in uh, a teaspoon to the big pot, it will likely just uh, lump together. So that is why I'm doing it this way. And it almost looks like ketchup. <laughs> But um, I'm just putting it into the big pot and because I blended it up, it will also just um, uh, be distributable into the bigger pot, as you can see here. And now I'm getting all of my jars ready and I will pour the barbecue sauce into them and uh, then I will uh, water bath it afterwards and uh, make sure to taste it really well before doing this because this is the time that you can uh, put in some more spices if you like it more salty or less salty or sweeter or whatever this is now you have to do it before putting it putting it into the jars I'm also wiping off the rims of the jars and then I will put on the lids right away and tighten them really well because it's lock lids, it's not uh, the two part lids. So you have to tighten them really well before putting it, 
them into the water bath. And I ended up with all of these jars of barbecue sauce, so that's just so nice. But I don't think I can have them all in the water bath canner at the same time. Um, even though I can have them in two layers, um, I think there are too many jars, but I'll just make, uh, make it uh, two times. So now I'm just putting them in and I heated up the water in the water bath canner before because the barbecue sauce is also really warm right now. And uh, fortunately I have a lot of the same kind of jars so I can make the whole bottom um, the same kind and then I'll just put in a tea towel and then I will put the other jars on top of that. And uh, then I'll just put in some more water to um, make it so that the water will get uh, right on top of the jars. So I'm just boiling some water so that it doesn't take so much time to heat up. And on this one I can uh, put the temperature 100 degrees and then I can set the timer. And uh, now that they are finished I will take out the, some of the jars and then the uh, dish towel and uh, then I can take out the rest of the jars and then they will just stay there and uh, cool overnight. And uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, I'm also making the salt and the enchilada sauce this day. So I can just reuse the hot water and uh, water bath all of the other things at the same time. So that will save a lot of energy that I don't have to heat up the water um, for everything. And I will just fill it up with a little more hot water before I will put in the last of the barbecue uh, sauce jars uh, because some of the water will evaporate while it's boiling. So that's why I just put in a little more water. And now I'll put in all of the rest of those jars and then they can also water bath. So this is all that I made in this video, but be sure to subscribe and follow for more because in the next couple of videos I will show you the peach salsa and the enchilada sauce and uh, you can always go and follow us on Instagram at Vestas Farm Life. Thank you for watching and bye bye!